Allowances are used in JobTread to create placeholders that you can then use on a contract, get that contract signed, and then selections can be made against those allowances later in the project. Let's take a look at how this works within the system. So here within a job budget, I have several cost groups and cost items, including an allowance group, and I have a few allowance items within that group already. Let's create a third allowance item together. So here I'm going to click on the three dots at the group level, add a cost item directly into that group, and this one is going to be called Appliance Allowance. Now I could select this one from my catalog, but let's just go ahead and create a new one. Here we can then enter in the allowance details. So of course this will be materials, this will be appliances, and then we can add the quantity of one lump sum. All right, and now I want to put the total. So I'm going to say the allowance is going to be $9,000. And then we need to convert this cost item into an allowance item. Currently, it's just a standard cost item in our budget. So we need to convert it so we see these little dollar signs here. So let's click on the three dots. And then we will choose to show details. Here, we can then add in this option to make it an allowance item. So let's toggle that on. Now, by default, it's going to default to a price allowance item, so it will include your profits in the total with the allowance amount. This is really especially helpful if you have a showroom and you've already marked up the showroom items, and so they're selecting those against the total allowance amount with your profits in them. The second option is to turn on show cost. Let's turn off this third one for now. In this type of an allowance, it is a cost allowance. That means that we have a set profit that we're making on this allowance item, no matter what. So if we had a $10,000 allowance and you have a $2,000 profit on top of that, then if your customer chooses any selections over the $10,000, you will not be adding on an additional profit. So therefore you're still making the $2,000 profit. That's a cost allowance. The third option is the cost and fee allowance. And this is where you are collecting a profit on the overage amount. So if your customer goes over that $10,000, then you're going to tack on an additional profit or margin on that overage. So they will have an additional fee to pay as well. So we're gonna leave this one as a cost and fee allowance. But of course, you'll see I also have a cost allowance example and a price allowance example. All right, that looks good. We'll save those changes. And now we're going to get these allowance items approved because what we need is for our whole budget to then be populating the budgeted cost column here. So let's click plus document. And now we're going to choose our proposal document. And I would like everything from my budget included. So we'll create it. And now you'll see your allowance items are listed. Now this is showing the total for the allowance items, including the profits on this document. If you'd like your cost allowance items or your cost and fee allowance items to just show the amount they have to spend, you can click on this little eyeball icon at the group header level and it will just show the amount they have to spend. But notice the price allowance is still showing the total price and that does include your allowance as well as your profits. Okay, so I like that. We're gonna save it and we will send it off to the customer. Great, the customer will then be signing your proposal without question, and we will move on. All right, so at this point, let's go back to our budget and see what happened. So over here in the budgeted cost column, you'll see that each of our allowances has a total amount that we can then use. You'll also notice that here in the selections tab, we have an allowance bucket for each of our allowances. These buckets are like buckets of money that the customer now has to spend. So I would like to create selection documents within each of the allowance buckets that then prompt the customer to spend the money. Those will be where you're putting your selections for your customer. So let's add a allowance document within the appliance allowance here. We will call this appliance package. And I'm just going to add some predefined selection items within this document. So from my catalog, I have the appliance package selections already set. So now we have three options for the customer to choose from. We'll go ahead and choose a due date. And now we'll create it. Let's add another selection document here as well. And we'll do appliance upgrades. And now I have a pre-saved group already for those. 
and you'll see we have some upgrade options for our customer and then I'm going to set the due date. Create and now they're both listed in here. They're both in draft state so when I'm ready to send these out to the customer I can then expand them, click the send option and I'd like to require a signature from this customer so we'll send it off. Great and then let's also do that with the appliances. Okay, so now your customers will have a selections tab within their portal. They'll also receive an email whenever you send them a selections document and that email will bring them into their portal to make those selections. So they will see then the due date for each of the selection documents and the status. So now let's go in as the customer and let's make our selections. So I'm going to expand this. Let's review it as our customer and now they can make their selection and sign. Great. Now let's go in. They have a few dollars left, a thousand dollars left, so they can then choose some upgrades. Here, maybe they would like a range hood and then maybe also a trash compactor. Now that brings us above the $1,000 allowance amount that they had remaining. Now remember that this allowance is a cost and fee allowance, so we're going to be adding a profit on top of the overage. So they have $1,700 selected. The allowance will remove $1,000 for them. Therefore, their remaining balance is $700 that they owe plus the added fee that is my margin on top of that. So therefore, they owe a total of $1,000. So let's review it at that, as that customer. They're going to sign it. And you'll also notice up here that it does indicate the overage amount for them. Now let's create a selection document within the countertops allowance. This is a strict cost allowance, so you're not collecting a fee on the overage. So here we're going to add our countertops options. So here, countertop selection. We'll add a group from our catalog that we already have. Great. And now in this case, it's showing us the cost per square foot. So we do need to indicate the total square feet for these countertops. So we can go behind the scenes of the document by clicking on edit item details. And now we can enter in our totals. So 40 and then we'll do square feet. Okay, close those item details and now you can see the totals listed. We'll go ahead, choose a different due date for this one as well and click create. Great, so I can expand that and you'll see that our allowance is listed and your customer can then receive it once we send. There we go. Now your customer can pop in here, review this document and make their selection choice. So in this case, remember, it is a cost allowance, so therefore, if they go over the allowance amount, they're not having the added fee on there. So here, the selections they chose are 3,400. They had 2,500 for their allowance, so it deducts it. And then they have $900 of a remaining balance to pay. But the added fee is not listed there. So they're going to sign, approve it. You'll notice that we have the overage listed right here. Great. And let's add one more for the flooring allowance. So we will create a new selection document. All right. And of course, we'll add some predefined selection options. Okay. And again, they're showing per square feet. So we do need to go behind the scenes of this document to edit the details. So I want a quantity of 200 square feet. For each. Great, close those item details. Now we see the totals and we'll select our due date and create it. Wonderful. So now you'll see we have a flooring selection added. Each of these items does have the margin included as well and that margin will be the same amount as the margin for the allowance, so the same percentage. Then it will eat away at it at the same rate. So let's send it off to our customer. All right. And now, of course, your customer can pop in here, review it, and make their selection. Now you'll see there is not an overage here, so it doesn't show them any type of added balance due. Instead, it will just deduct the allowance amount, and they can sign it.
All right, and so here you'll even notice that it does show the remaining amount in that allowance for your customer. There are also full summaries across the top that show them the total amount of overage or the total amount remaining given all their selections. Now let's see how this impacted our budget. When we head back to our budget, you'll notice that your selections are listed here in their own groups and you still have your allowances listed. Now, there is another way that you can view this that could be really helpful for you. If you edit your budget by clicking the gear icon and then choose group by allowance. Now this will show you your allowance totals along with what was selected for each allowance in their own groups. And I like to save this budget view as a new view for myself called allowance view or something of that nature because then it becomes really easy to go back to it at any point and you can keep track of your allowances. Now, one thing to notice is that when we go over to our budgeted cost, our allowance amount should be trending towards zero as the selections are made. So selections will then eat away at that allowance amount. Here's another example. So we had countertop allowance. The original allowance was 2,500 and the countertops chosen were 3,400. Therefore it trended towards zero and we have our item that was selected that went over. So we should have zero balance for our allowance. However, in this case, we did not spend the full allowance amount. Therefore, there's $600 remaining in this allowance and the selection that was chosen is $1,700. If we'd like to zero out this allowance amount, we can then add it to a change order, zero it out that way, and then we can move forward with the rest of the project. If you have any questions, contact your customer success manager or email support at jobtread.com and we'll be happy to help.